We eat a large variety of foods, and most of the time we don't think about where it comes from or how what we eat can impact the world around us. So we're going to look at where our food actually is coming from. There are only about 15 plant and 8 animal species that supply 90% of our food. Wheat, rice, and corn um, provide about half of the calories that you consume. All three of these are annuals, which means they have to be replanted every year. And when we have to replant something every year, that means at the end of the season we plow it up. Whenever we remove vegetation, we're exposing that soil and making it more susceptible to erosion. Two-thirds of the world's people live primarily on these three grains, wheat, rice, and corn, uh, which actually can lead to malnutrition. Remember that malnutrition is when you're not getting the right nutrients. You may be getting enough calories, but not the right calories. So to produce our food, um, here in the United States, we depend mainly on industrialized agriculture. It's high input because it requires um, high input of energy, high input of fertilizer, high input of irrigated water, and pesticides as well. Plantation agriculture is another type of agriculture where we export cash crops. Traditional subsistence agriculture is where you produce just enough food for your family, so you're not selling any, you're not exporting any. And then traditional intensive agriculture is very labor intensive, and rice would be the best example of that. So looking at the impacts of intensive plant production, so this is large scale plant production, usually what we do is monoculture, where we have a selectively bred strain or genetically modified crop and we plant that same identical genetically modified seed. It takes a lot of fertilizers and pesticides which in their own have a lot of negative impacts. We know that the um, nitrogen and the phosphorus in our fertilizers leads to eutrophication. Uh, pesticides can bioaccumulate which leads to biomagnification through the food chains. It also requires extensive use of machinery, which adds to the energy use. Other downfalls, um, to, have, to produce enough food, we have to clear land. So we're losing habitats as we're removing these hedges and these woodlands to make our fields larger and larger. Anytime we remove vegetation, um, we are exposing the soil and increasing the amount of sediments that erode. All right, slash and, burn farm, slash and burn farming does not have the same impact that our industrial farms do as long as it's done sustainably. Typically, it's a family that clears a small area of land. They're going to burn any vegetation um, on site, and so what happens are the nutrients that were stored in the plants get added back to the soil. Um, the nutrients only last for a short period of time and then the family would clear another area and allow the, that area to grow back. Um, this works for growing indigenous plants and usually they're not going to use um, fertilizers because they've got the nutrients there. They're not going to use pesticides because they're growing plants that are native to the areas. Um, this, what this does is allow small communities to survive where you have unproductive land. Generally this is going to be in tropical regions. Uh, tropical soil, once you remove the vegetation, has very little nutrients. Because remember our tropical trees aren't deciduous, so there's no leaf litter to add nutrients to the soil. And what nutrients they are are recycled very quickly. So the burning adds nutrients to the soil so that they can use it for that short period of time. Now, right after burning, because the vegetation is removed, there can be erosion, which does remove some of the nutrients and um, organic material in the soil. As long as one family is using it, this is sustainable, but when large communities are using slash and burn, then that can lead to habitat loss. Um, if it's done on a small scale, the original vegetation does establish very quickly from secondary succession. You already have soil, you've got nearby seed trees, so it does tend to grow back very quickly. Another issue with monoculture is not all of the crops that are grown on the land are used for food. 
Um, corn and soybeans are two of the big crops that we have on our industrial farms here in the United States. And if you look at the chart here at the bottom, it shows what corn is used for. If you look right here, only 13% is used for food or for seed. 7% uh, we use for sweeteners. Um, a lot of, if you look on the ingredients of a lot of our foods that contain like high fructose corn syrup and things like that, that would be the corn sweeteners. Uh, we use corn to produce ethanol. Um, when you go to the gas station, it usually tells you on the pump what percentage of it is ethanol. Most gas that you buy does contain ethanol from corn. 18% um, of our corn that we produce is exported, but this is the largest use, about 56% of the corn that we grow actually goes to feed our animals.